Hey, Tia, welcome to Plant Based Best Life with Rena and Courtney. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, yay! Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for being here. Yeah, we're, we're so excited. So I'm going to let Courtney jump right into um, to get this started for us. Yeah. Well, hi, Tia. I'm Courtney Robinson, and I've been watching you for a long time, and I love your I, stuff. I watched your curry curry video this week, and I've been wanting curry so bad ever since watching that, so it was, <laughs> I'm going to make that. Um, I know a little bit about you, but I would love for you to tell our group about your journey and your education and background with whole food plant-based eating, specifically this type of whole food plant-based eating. Yeah, I, um, well, I grew up born and raised in New Orleans, and although the food was delicious, um, it was horrible for my body, and so I, I kind of realized that at a young age, at the age of 12, I really started to gain a lot of unhealthy body fat, and so my cycle began with dieting, and um, I hate that it happened that young, but it did. So, you know, I just, I, I just fad dieted um, for most of my young adult life, um, all throughout my 20s and my early 30s. And then when I got pregnant around the age of, I think I was 32, <laughs> somewhere around there, um, I got gestational diabetes and it was just such a shock to me because it's not in my family. Um, and so my doctor was like, this is pretty much directly related to, to your health um, and, you know, how you eat and your diet. So that was the first time I really realized that, you know, even though I thought that I had been dieting and dieting was healthy my, almost my whole life, um, it wasn't. And so, you know, I did what I had to do when I was pregnant. I ate the way that they told me to. But that's when I first came across um, Forks Over Knives documentary. And that's when I really learned about a whole foods plant-based diet. Um, prior to that, during my single fad dieting years, I had come across um, the book Eat to Live. And I had read that and I had tried that for a little while, but it just wasn't sustainable for me, even though it was a plant-based way of living. Um, so I kind of quickly got off of that and just did some other fad diet. Um, but I was familiar with what a plant-based diet was, um, or actually being a vegan, I should say. But when I got pregnant and I came across forks over knives, it really made an impression on me. And I knew right away that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I just had a really hard time sticking to it. You know, once my son was born, um, it wasn't as easy as, as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think we all think it's going to be easy when you have your, when you're pregnant with your first child and um, it wasn't, you know, it was a joy, but it was a challenge. And so to um, work through being a new mom and all of what comes with that, and then to take on this totally new way of eating was really hard for me. So um, I would say I was 32 at the time. I'm 40 now. So from, you know, that whole span um, from 32 to about 38 and a half, 39, I was on and off vegan, plant-based, you know, just trying to make it work. And um, I finally did <laughs> about a year and a half ago. So um that's kind of my story with my, you know, eating. Um, I went to school. Uh, I went, uh, you know, obviously college, and I, I really couldn't decide on what I wanted to be as far as my education goes. I wanted to be a nutritionist. I've always have been fascinated by health and nutrition. Um, <laughs> and like I said, even though I had fad dieted my whole life, I thought I was doing the healthy thing, and I wasn't. But um, I didn't end up studying or majoring in nutrition. I did sociology, I got my degree, and just kind of started a sales career and, and did that up until I had my kids. And I decided, my husband and I, that I could be a stay-at-home mom and uh, do that as my full-time job. But um, about a year and a half ago, I decided, you know, it's never too late to go for what you want, and I'm going to become a plant-based nutritionist and I did so that's kind of you know 
I wouldn't say I, I practice it, but I am a plant-based nutritionist. Um, I'm more so a mom and a, a social media person, I guess, which I'm really having fun doing. <laughs> so. Well, I would say you practice it. I mean, you practice it with your YouTube, you know, you share your information. I feel like that's practicing it for sure. Yeah. Um, so how did you find your way to whole food plant-based eating? I feel like we answered that unless you want to add anything to that, but. Yeah, no, I think um, seeing forks over knives was really just like, that was my way to this. Um, definitely. I was thinking about you today because I have four grown children and when I was a vegetarian for 10 years and then I married mm -hmm. a fast, I married a fast food vegetarian <laughs> and it was very hard. It was very hard. So we became what I called flexitarian. So mm -hmm. I only allowed my children to have meat a couple of times a week. And, um, you know, it was really, it was really challenging. And so we're going to talk about that, but I was thinking, I really admire you. Rena and I've had this conversation a lot. I wish that I had stuck to my guns earlier and had been more, um, I don't want to say rigid, but that I had tried harder maybe with my kids to be more plant-based and I did the best I could, but it was, it was challenging with yeah. our families. We're going to, we're going to ask you that question. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, but I think we all could say, you know, I wish I would have did this. And especially with our kids, I wish I would have made the decision to stick with this when they were infants, you know, cause then they, would have been eating this way for their whole lives, which is not long. But, um, you know, my daughter is, is naturally just kind of like a raw vegan. Like that's really all she wants. But my son gives a lot of pushback. Um, he's almost eight and, you know, um, he, he understands kind of in his own little way, why I eat the way I do and why it's healthy. And for the most part, he eats that way. Cause I don't buy anything else in this house that's not plant-based, but he, um, you know, he still wants to make a point to let me know that he wants burgers and cheese pizzas and he's going to do it when he's not with me. And so I'm just like, well, you need to make the best decision for yourself. But, um, I think we can all say, my point is, I think we could all say, I wish, you know, the, the important thing is that we're doing it now, you know? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't yeah. want to steal Rena's thunder because I think that one's coming on down the line. So yeah, um, let's, and this is something my dad and I have had this conversation and my husband and I, and I call it the dabbling, you know, um, I know that you had kind of been on and off and same with me. Um, and it finally stuck with me about, I mean, I'd been vegetarian for years, but I still like cheese and eggs and things mm. like that. So um, early in my life. Um, so what finally made it stick for you? Because I don't think I'm a dabbler. Like I can't dabble, you know, I have to be, yeah, oh, this is who I am. That's, and that's how I've always been. I'm a very like black and white person. I'm not really good with the gray. So um, the times that I had done it, I was in it. Like I, I was in it, uh, but, and I was in it for a long time, but I fell off the wagon for some, you know, reason. And um, what finally made me stick this time, I think, was reading the starch solution and understanding the importance of starches in our diet. Because prior to all this, prior to this last time sticking to it, um, whenever I would try to eat plant-based or even vegan, you know, not necessarily plant-based at the time, sometimes I would just go vegan and eat vegan processed stuff. But I always was fearful of carbs because of all of the fad dieting I had done in the past and all the junk that you hear out there that's just not true about good carbohydrates. And so I, this time reading the Star Solution and understanding what Dr. McDougall was saying and believing it, I think it stuck because I let go of my fear of carbs and I embraced starches and I embraced carbs and I was finding and I am I was and still am just very satisfied and full all of the time and who doesn't want that you know so <laughs> it um 
it was so easy for me to stick to it. Whether my family had, was eating that way or not, I didn't feel tempted. I didn't feel neglected. And it was, you know, just, just a really not challenging for me at all. Um, so definitely the start solution was, I think, what, done it, what did it for me. Yeah, I, um, I work for a Dr. Dean Ornish program in cardiac rehab. So we promote okay. you know, a whole food plant diet. Mm -hmm. But I would say, even though I've been there for about five years now, I would say it was the start solution that really solidified it for me mm -hmm. as well. You know, mm -hmm. kind of, oh, beginning to understand, like I still had never heard no oil. And so right. when I heard that, it was life changing. It was just yeah. so life changing. Before I go on, do you want to add anything? I'm just echoing all of that. I mean, and I know some of our viewers and Courtney and I both have been, I mean, I feel like we kind of made ourselves like little science projects for the last couple of years <laughs> and we, we tried all the things and, and I've been vegetarian for 30 something years and I've been vegan for over a decade, but I had never made the oil connection. Like mm -hmm. I had cooked without oil before, but it was just like a disconnect and the same that you were saying with carbs. Like literally my husband was like, are we eating rice again? Like what? <laughs> is up I know. but yeah I mean, all of that really resonates and I know Courtney and I can both say that uh, we've had the same experience and that's why we one reason we'd like to share this because so many people in our group are having that same thing like can I really have mm. potatoes yes <laughs> yeah it's shocking it's just it's and you know I, I get a lot of uh, questions on Instagram like does it really work or, or like can you really eat potatoes and and I'm like yes you know and when you think when you finally understand that, you know, the reason potatoes have such a bad rap or pizza or, you know, it's, it's because of all the bad things we put on top of them. Although pizza is not like a whole plant food, but you still can have pizza. But, um, you know, like just let's just stick with potatoes. You know, the stuff that we're putting on top of them, that's the problem, you know, and, and it, I just I never realized that until the book. And then it all made sense. And I said, well, what do I have to lose really? Except 50 pounds. Like, what do I have to lose? I have been back and forth for a decade. Like I'm not, I mean, I've really gone nowhere except down with my health. So um, it was, I, it, it was a blessing that I read that book. Um, so wouldn't you say like, I, I know we experienced this and I imagine it was the same for you. And I think this is helpful for people and then I'll let Courtney have it back. Um, the thing was, is like fat started falling off my body. I was just like, I remember calling Courtney cause we both kind of had goals. Cause we had both uh, for me, especially I had menopause, belly fat plus COVID. It was just like, what is going on? And <laughs> I remember calling her and being like, looking at the scale going, what is actually happening right now? Like, yeah. how is this so easy it, compared to up, down, yo-yo, this, that, switching gears. And I really think it's important for people. Like if you, if you do this and you, and you, and you're being honest that you're actually doing mm -hmm. it, you are going to lose weight. If yeah. that is your aim, you are going to lose weight. You're going to lose fat. The fat mm -hmm. you eat is the fat you wear. So that's my yeah option. but yeah did you experience that too where it was kind of like whoa with the weight falling um, off? mine was mine was real gradual I didn't I didn't have like any like whoa moment except um when I because I was about 190 when I started when I got past 177 that's when I knew this was for real because I had I had I had been back and forth over the, you know, since having kids from 177 to 190, but I had never gone below 177. And, you know, that just tells me, and I just know this from all my studies and just every, you probably know it too. It's just that, that tells me that all those silly fad diets I had done, it was probably just water weight that I had lost, you know, going from 189 to 177. It just, I never was really losing fat until I did the start solution. And I, <laughs> I never forget, I, I got on that scale, and it was like 175. And I freaked out. And like, we had like a party, like, I couldn't believe it. 
And that was the moment I knew this was for real. And um, man, there was no looking back. Like it just, it was great. And I was feeling great too. That's the thing. Even before I hit that 177, I was just feeling unbelievable, you know, and didn't want to, um, to get, to, to stop eating this way for anything. So, um, but yeah, mine was, mine was definitely more of a gradual change. Well, and I, I want to be clear too, like I, I've lost about 18 pounds and mine was mm-hmm. gradual for the amount of weight that I lost. I mean, I think from June to what was it, Courtney, December or June to November, June to December. Uh, so, I mean, that's seven yeah, months, June, you know, June, yeah. to where yeah. I, to where I am right now. So it's about seven months. So, I mean, that's a pound or less a week, but that's another thing that I think is important mm-hmm. is you're feeling better. You may be sleeping better. You're seeing some weight come off on the scale. And so you're like, okay, I'm going to keep, it gives you the motivation to kind of keep going in that direction. And then when you hit that point where you had never got same exact thing happened to me, there was a point of color, which I had not been in over a decade. And I just, I had said to her, you know, if I can just get here, I'll be. And then the day, and this happened to her too, that was just, then we, I started digging in and researching even more. And I yeah. think Courtney can share her experience with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say for me also, I've managed my rheumatoid arthritis. I've kept my rheumatoid arthritis under control without medicine, you know, until no big surprise for anyone on our channel, but I caught COVID a couple of months ago. And until I caught COVID, I was in the best shape of my life, but I had asthma had a heart condition that I was probably born with, but I was able to keep that all under control with this diet. And, and we both exercise, you know, quite a bit as well, but you know, if I chose a different path, my life would look very different. You know, if I yeah. did a standard American diet, I'd probably be on all kinds of drugs. So, you know, and I am slowly getting better, you know, and feel like a whole food plant-based diet is helping me get better. That's so, great. I don't want to get, yeah, I don't want to get too off track because, but there are a lot of questions I have, and I'm um, hoping to not forget one. I'll Reno okay. I'll sneak in on you. I think I'm going to go ahead and sneak it in right now because I don't want to forget. Um, I want to know about. So I see a lot of recipes, and there's no, and I know what Dr. Esselstyn says. I don't know if you follow him, but there's no stevia, or but there's a lot of maple syrup, and I think that's been kind of my one holdout. Is I just. I can't with so much maple syrup, like, and I feel like maybe a lot of people overuse that if they aren't careful. So I still use stevia. (laughs) I want to know, I want to know the truth. I'm like, I know some people got to be using stevia or something out there or monk fruit or whatever. Can you talk a little bit about sweeteners? Are you just using maple syrup? Did you go down the maple syrup? Only um, I I don't use stevia, but that's not for any particular reason. It's just because I don't uh, I don't find I'm having to sweeten things much. Um, and when I do, it pro- it's it's either with bananas or I guess a little maple syrup. Um, but I'm not I'm not a sweet person, so I, I don't eat a lot of sweet. If I do, it's usually oatmeal, and it's I, I'll use a banana sweeten it. Um, every now and then on occasion, I'll have like a little mug cake and I will use a little maple syrup, but it's like a, not even a tablespoon. Um, I don't have a problem with stevia. I know it's, you know, not a, it's, it's natural, but I know it's still a artificial sweetener, I guess. But, um, I say, if you got to have it every now and then do what you got to do, you know, I mean, (laughs) there were, There were many times I, you know, when I first moved over and I just was dying for something sweet and I was tired of eating a date, I would have like one vegan marshmallow. Like, I mean, it's, that's not going to kill me. You know, it's not going to throw me off course. So I feel like if, you know, if a little bit of stevia every now and then you need, I I would think that's fine. And then there'll probably be a point where you feel like you don't need it anymore, maybe, you know? And so if it's going to allow you to eat healthier foods, then I don't see a problem with it. You know, if you're overdoing it, I would think, you know, that might be a problem, but every now and then. 
I definitely think it's something that I want to reduce in my life, mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't feel like I'm overdoing it, but I definitely, I use it in my coffee, you yeah. know, but I don't necessarily need fruit or anything like that, but it is something I kind of want to, I do. And until I got sick, I was trying to reduce it. We both were. And then I just kind of was like, you know, I just got to do the best I can right now. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and that's kind of my, my go-to is if you can't make the best choice, make the next best choice. Right. <laughs> so that's a great way yeah. to think of it. <laughs> um, I want to know, or we want to know, can you tell us what helped you the most when you started to transition to this lifestyle? Like what were your kind of, what helped the most? And to um, maintain it. Oh, definitely the um, learning to shop from my pantry and not from recipes. Um, and I have videos in my YouTube channel on this, just kind of <laughs> being a pantry chef. But, um, you know, finding those handful of recipes that I really liked and rotating those and just sticking to those, now that was something that kind of naturally happened for me. Um, you know, and then this thought kind of was birthed from it, but I am just kind of more of a, you know, we're all creatures of habit, but I just kind of like the same thing over and over again. And so um, that was a really big help for me is just having like three recipes for breakfast, for lunch and for dinner that I would just rotate through. And I always kept those um, ingredients in stock and I never ran out of them. And I still do that till this day. And um, so every week I just go in my pantry and I, my grocery list is literally the things that I'm running low on and that's it. I go in my refrigerator. I do the same thing. So I'm not making a, I'm not sitting down every weekend searching for recipes and then making a grocery list off those recipes and then going to get all the ingredients and then using the ingredients. And then you don't have the ingredients anymore because you used them. It's like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say just simplifying things, easy dishes, repeating it, repeating those meals and um, keeping those ingredients in stock all the time, never running out. Yes, I do not think I'm an envious person normally, but I do have a little bit of pantry envy with your pantry. <laughs> well, I'm in Texas. So they, you know, in Texas, they make sure you got a big pantry. It's crazy. <laughs> I regret that when I built my house, I did not build a big pantry. So, okay. So what are some of your favorite, what are your favorite? Your, Courtney, Courtney, before you go on, cause I had this question too. We have a question in the group um, on okay. this topic. What, cause this was, I was actually going to ask you something similar. The three breakfast recipes that you would rotate through. What are mm -hmm. those? Um, they're pretty much the same as they've always been. I have, what do I eat? My, um, uh, either my Rick's big bowl cereal or bran flakes. Um, just because those are the least processed, um, just whole, you know, ingredients. And when I say bran flakes, I'm not meaning like raisin bran or it is literally just bran. Um, and, um, oatmeal, and hash browns, you know, for a while I would throw in some grits, which I was really obsessed with, but that was not when I was eating cereal. I tried to not do like two processed breakfasts. So, um, or minimally processed. So yeah, it, right now it's, um, those cereals and oatmeal and hash browns that's, or fruit, you know, when I was at a weight loss plateau, I did a lot of fruit for breakfast. Um, but that's it. And that's been it for the past like year and a half. I just, <laughs> I just stick with the same thing. I, I think we kind of tend to do that too. Um, had a thought on that. What was it? I lost it. It went away. Okay, Courtney, you can have it back. Thank well, you. Just, just step in if you do, because this is just a continuation really of that class, that, that question, which are, what are your favorite go-to meals? So maybe you could tell us the three lunch or three dinner or other three that you use. Yeah. Lunch is usually, um, think of lunch. lunch is usually um, like tostadas. So I'll just take just tortillas that I keep, um, just corn tortillas 
I'll just put them in the oven and make them crispy. And then I'll just throw together in a pan five minutes, just beans and veggies and some taco sauce. And that's it. Um, or it's leftovers and um, lunch is lunch is probably my most random time because it really, if I have leftovers, I'm probably eating leftovers. Um, but usually I'll make tacos or um, today I had leftovers. I had lentil marinara on, on Ezekiel bread with um, a whole bunch of orange and spinach, you know, not together separately. <laughs> but um, my dinners, I would say go-tos for dinners are potatoes with broccoli and cheese sauce always. Um, my lentil marinara, red beans and rice. Um you know, it just really depends on how I'm feeling. But those are probably the, the lentil marinara and the, the lentil sloppy joes are really popular in my house. <laughs> my uh, my husband and my son just love that, like for weeks now, for weeks. So um, that's pretty, pretty big right now. That's that's good. My husband told me the other day we've been married. We've been together nine and a half years and he was like, I really don't like red sauce, mar meaning marinara. And I'm like, yeah. How? How <laughs> can you not like marinara? Yeah, like, and you just, like, you know, so many meals I can make you. Okay. So the, la the last question I have, and then Rena's going to take over, is when you prepare a meal, does everyone's plate look the same or do you mix it up for certain family members? Yeah. Uh, my daughter's food is never the same as ours. She, you know, like I said earlier, is, kind of just by nature, a raw vegan. <laughs> so she, um, and she likes peanut butter. So she's always, you know, I'll make something and I'm always chopping up veggies and fruits for her and putting peanut butter on a piece of toast. I can't, or she loves ramen noodles. Um, she loves the McDougal uh, ramen. <laughs> so she, um, I make that for her with cucumbers and a fruit and, you know, uh, carrots. So she's always separate. I always offer everything to her, but she, it's always, no. Um, my son typically will eat what we're eating, but again, he's seven and a half. So he's picky. And so he, his food will always be which what Finley's eating. So it's very simple and basic. I don't quote unquote make anything separate for them. I, I call it, I'm just cutting up stuff or putting peanut butter on bread or putting ramen noodles in the microwave really quick. It's never um, anything extravagant. You know, if they don't want what my husband and I are eating, then they can have something small separate. And I, I have a list. Um, I don't know if anybody, <laughs> who, if anybody follows me on Instagram, but I go live every Monday and I've been showing the, this list I have on my refrigerator and I just wrote down all of the plant-based easy things that both of my kids like that way, if they don't want to eat what I made for the family, I can just quickly open the refrigerator or the pantry and just make them something that takes not even five minutes while I'm, you know, stirring whatever's in the pot for, I guess me and my husband. But um, for the most part, I would say me and my husband and my son eat typically the same things and my daughter. No. So I am always, making multiple stuff or preparing, you know, <laughs> you know, I, um, raising four kids, they all had different appetites and my youngest son's autistic. And so people who have autism are often extremely OCD with food. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think one of the things I did right, and, and I also have a degree in early childhood education. So, I allowed my children, like I served the food, they were offered the food, but if they didn't want it, they could go get a bowl of cereal, a peanut butter or nut butter sandwich. I always had fresh fruit and veggies mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Well, and I just didn't make a big deal out of it because yeah. it was a big deal for me. My family did make a big deal out of food. And, you know, they have all have extremely varied palates. They three of my, all my boys cook. My daughter doesn't cook. Um, but they all love, like they all, three of them are very concerned about their health. So I think that's good. I think sometimes we get too obsessed about trying to force our kids to eat, you know, yeah. like we eat. And I don't know that that's a good thing. 
I, I just, for, for me and for my husband, we just don't, um, we don't see the point, you know, I just, I just don't see the point. Why not let them explore and eat what they want? But yeah, I mean, we always offer, I always offer and, and I always make a plate for them. I don't even ask. I'm like, Oh, here's dinner. And <laughs> I don't even know. I always say this every time. I don't know why I do this with my daughter. Like she never eats it, but, um, you know, always offer it. And I always just educate my kids that, that this always, this question always comes up too. Is like, how did you get everyone to become vegan? And it was just, um, I did not force them at all, you know, because I just don't, I'm not going to force them because I feel like for me being forced to do things as a child, um, I always rebelled or went the opposite way. And that's definitely not what I want to happen when they're older. So I just educate them and um, have them try my foods and I don't buy any animal products that we keep in the house. And so they just all kind of followed suit and it's been great. It's really been great. That's awesome. I saw, is it Riley was walking with you the other day on the video? Oh, Finley. Yeah. Finley. 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 She's adorable. Thank yeah, you. She was, she was, I just loved you. were like, there are neighbors everywhere. I have pepper spray. <laughs> I was like, you must so be many, getting so many compliments. <laughs> I do. And I appreciate it. I really do. And it did get me thinking like, oh, like I just don't think about that. But yeah, it's a, it's gated. I mean, we're so blessed to, have like all that land for us, us meaning my neighbors, um, to, we just so blessed to have that in our, like, literally, like I walk down my street and go walk the trails. Um, so I just don't think about like what that might look like to people who have no idea this is even my neighborhood. And, um, so, but no, I, I did start carrying pepper spray just because there's like, um, mountain lions, like randomly oh, yeah. every now and then. And so I'm not so concerned with with my neighbors attacking me, it's more like <laughs> the, the wildlife. So, um, but yeah, I, I made sure to yeah. mention it because I get so many people who, who comment and say, you need to be careful. That I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> I grew up, I grew up in New Orleans. I'm pretty street, like smart. Um, you know, it's not the safest city. So, uh, but yeah, I carry, I carry that with me. Look. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to let Rena take over and I'm going to sit back and relax and listen to okay. you too. So Thank I, rem you. I remember seeing that one as well and thinking and, and thinking I wasn't surprised people asked you that because yeah. Yeah. It, you know, you're just like, where is she? And is she okay? No, it's uh, true. Cause I could randomly just be on some random trail. My mom even asked me like a, a couple months ago, like that looks kind of scary. I'm like, Oh, it's, it's fine. It's gated. Like no one can get to it from the outside world, but I mean, I guess you could, but anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. So the mace is for the, or the pepper spray is for the mountain lions. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, all right. Well, if you have noticed anybody watching and, and TI, I may have forgotten to tell you that I have two screens over here where I'm pulling information from and watching for questions in the Facebook group. And then I've got you here on a different computer. Of course. Um, so that's why I keep looking. That's why I keep looking that way. So I don't miss a question because I can't see them from the zoom screen. And I don't have a question right now. I mean, I don't have any questions for the, from the group right now. I did post some links for rips, big bowl recipe and uh, the actual product. People can okay, go to website or um, they can. Sometimes I think Whole Foods has it. Um, I've heard that Whole Foods has it. Well, not and, anymore. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's I think right. he pulled all his stuff, that. which sucked because I was, I loved the burritos he had. I would, I would get those for like quick. If I needed like to quickly leave the house, I would pop it in the microwave and bring it with me somewhere. And so, um, yeah, I think he had said something on his podcast, maybe just with the whole COVID thing. I don't understand why, but they, uh, pulled all the stuff from Whole Foods. And so now it's just all directly sold on the website. So, in yeah. you know, for a second, I was a little disappointed in that, but until I ordered something and it was here the next day and I was like, Oh, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> That's even better. So if, if anybody's looking for that, it's plantstrong.com is where you can find that. I did drop a link in the chat 
Um, I had a question for you back on uh, earlier. You said that when you got your new, became a nutritionist or got your nutritionist, mm -hmm. which do you mind sharing which program that you did? Yeah, I went through AFPA, um, their program, and it is really fantastic. And it's way more intense than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so um, I'm doing that same program. I'm doing that program. And I, I just told Courtney that I was like, I really had no idea what yeah. I was getting into. I'm so glad you said that because I'm, yeah. I'm glad to like know someone kind of personally who's, who's done that. And yeah, I found it. I found it very robust and I'm doing it for the same reason that you were. I'm not trying to go coach people individually, but like, I just want the knowledge deeper if I'm going to be sharing it. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah. I have always just wanted to do it. And um, like I said before, I just figured, well, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go do it. Um, and it took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, but um, I'm glad I did it, you know, and I might eventually, coach people or, or take clients. But, um, right now I threw out COVID, you know, and I started the YouTube channel, I didn't expect it to grow as it has. And so I'm just having so much fun doing that. And my, my blog has grown. And so I'm just kind of like, um, appreciating and having fun doing that. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I think it's great. And I'm, I think the program is amazing. I was, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really good. I I feel really strongly about what I'm I'm learning, and so yeah, I'm, I'm glad to know that you did it. I'm yeah, I have a question for you. We have another question here, and then we'll move on. Um, Laura, Laura, if you want to come on and join us inside the Zoom, you can. If anybody wants to come on inside the Zoom to ask a question, please do. We'd love to see your sweet face. What the way that works is, we put, you would go into the waiting room, and I would let you know before I bring you up. But um, I don't see her jumping on. So she says, a few people that know I've started eating this way are confused about how I'm hydrating my body without oil or fat in my diet. Can you speak to that? Do you have any thoughts? How on she's hydrating. I guess I don't understand. Like, wait, getting water? Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of misconception about what oil and fat does in your body. And I think... Hmm. Two, people think that when you do this, that you're getting no fat and yeah. what I've not realized is that there is fat in all fruits and vegetables. I think all of them. Just broccoli. tiny amounts, you know? Oh, she's saying dry skin. That's kind of a, um, I, I, so if you, and I'll let you speak to that if you have something to say about it. So there's uh, an Ayurvedic in Ayurvedic principles, there is an idea that oil is needed for hydration of the skin. Mm. And it's so people who follow that are hesitant because they're thinking, oh, my skin might get dry. I, my skin will be dry. I'll, I may prematurely age. I'm not saying that's what Laura's asking about, about premature aging, but there's nothing. Uh, in my research and my study, and I'm curious to hear what you say about this. There's nothing in oil or fat that's coming from processed food. Yeah. Butter, uh, refined, highly refined oils like coconut oil and, and such that is giving you any kind of fat that you need. The fat you need is in the food, the whole plant, the whole food that you're eating. It's in the plants. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do get that a lot. I mean, I've had other people say, well, I just can't go without oil because my skin gets dry. And I have not found that to be true. And I've been doing this since June or July. So I think the premature aging thing has more to do or the, the way that this can impact the way low fat can impact your skin really isn't about low fat. It's about people avoiding soy fats mm -hmm. because they're worried about estrogen. And there's a lot of misconceptions about that going around. But, um, you know, Laura, and, and I know Laura, she's a close personal friend of mine that sometimes you, it's as simple as saying, you know, this is working for me and I'm getting all the fat, all the healthy fat I need from the foods I'm eating. And when we say no fat, that's not, that's not exactly true. No oil, no added oils. So maybe, Maybe there's something around that. Any other thoughts either one of you have on that? 
No, I would just echo what you say. I, I always, I mean, not to get into big conversations with people, but I always, if ever I question anything, I think back to our early ancestors and well, they didn't have oil. <laughs> like they ate the plant that had the oil in it. They were just fine. Um, no, I don't know physically what their skin looked like, but when it comes to our skin, what I can say to address that is how, you know, I, I think water has a lot to do with the hydration of your skin and what your skin is looking like. And I, um, the only way I can attest to that is just for myself in general, my skin has gotten so crazy glowy um, since eating a plant-based diet, since watching the fats that I eat. Now, I, I have not cut out all fats completely. I do eat um, some fats. And that was one thing with, you know, the starch solution that I didn't totally agree with. Uh, I found, I tried it, but I found for myself that I needed a tiny bit of fat to be satisfied. And so I ate a little bit of fat, but it came from whole plant foods. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the fat that we get from whole plant foods is sufficient enough. There's no need for us to get fat from processed foods whatsoever. So, um, I agree. And also on the note of water and Courtney may have something to add as well. Water is huge. And when you eat this way and you leave the oils out, mm -hmm. your body much more efficiently utilizes the water because it's not having to, you know, uh, who was it the other day, Courtney, I told you described, I think it was Dr. Barnard. Cause I'm kind of obsessed with his stuff right now. It's and awesome. he said, he said, eating oil is like putting Vaseline in your blood. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was just like, like I could visualize that. And I mean, I've spent, I've kind of gotten in the weeds on, you know, endothelium, endothelial cells and what's actually happening in the happening in the blood vessels. And that just with the, with the graphics and videos that I've seen of replicating what the arteries look like and what's happening when you feed them. Um, if you're getting a sufficient amount of fiber from whole foods and you are hydrating sufficiently, not having oil is not going to make your skin dry. I mean, unless it, maybe there's some other medical condition going on. Yeah. And also I liked what you said about, I think it would be helpful to tell, talk to some people, talk to the, um, what are these healthy fats like flaxseed? Um, I know Courtney and I've had this conversation about like, sh like adding a little bit of flaxseed into on top of oatmeal or whatever. And she, like Courtney says that helps her feel more satiated. So when you, if you're thinking, well, what fats do I add? I think about an ounce a day of, and Tia, I'd love to hear what you have to say, but like avocado flaxseed, other things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I don't, I don't think of it in measurements. I think of it just in grams. And so like I, you know, avocado is great. I, now prior to reading the starch solution, I would have like a whole avocado a day and thought that that was amazing. <laughs> and so um, now I have like a fourth of one or a half of one. Um, if I have a half of one, I know that I probably have like 15 grams of fat for the day. So the rest of the day, I won't have too much more added fat, you know. Um, but yeah, like avocado tahini, you know, my hungry vegan mama salad dressing. If I have that for the day, it's kind of like the avocado. Like I know, okay, I've had, you know, a decent amount of fat. I'm only going to have a little bit more. Um, but I put brown flax seeds, just like a tablespoon, almost on everything. Um, unless I've had avocado or tahini that day, but I, I love that. And I think it's good to make the distinction between a weight loss, fat loss process versus maintenance. Mm -hmm. So starch, starch solution and the other book, if people aren't familiar, maximum weight loss, those are both mm -hmm. by Google maximum weight loss gets real strict, gets it really down so that you can, you can lose the fat. Mm -hmm. You know, the fat is holding you back. So, but once you're to maintenance, then, then you just kind of have to play around, right? With what amounts of the fats kind of can work for you, but not, I, I think Courtney and I can safely say we're never going back to oil. Oh yeah. Because 
has no nutritional value and it's too calorie dense and it's the most high yeah. processed food on the planet. Um, so I think it's important yeah. to make that distinction too, Courtney. Well, in intensive cardiac rehab, you know, with working for an Ornish, a Dr. Dean Ornish program, we only recommend about 30 to 40 grams of fat. Obviously it changes with male or female or the weight, but these are sick people, right? They're mostly diabetic. They've got heart disease. And so there is that guideline and it is kind of dose. I tell our patients it's kind of dose appropriate. Like, so, you know, we obviously want to watch the saturated fat, the hydrogenated fat and, um, the, what's the other one? My brain just went out the window, a trans, the trans fat, but you know, the fat that we do, I put flax meal and chia on my oatmeal in the morning. And I kind of find, and I know there's a lot of talk about how much protein you need and the T. Colin Campbell studies about you only need a certain amount, turns on cancer genes, but I've also found fat and protein. I kind of have to play with it a little bit with my activity level. And it can be just as much as maybe five or 10 grams of each, just to find that satiety or just if I'm working out a lot, sometimes I need a little bit more plant-based protein. If I'm um, feeling hungry a lot, a little bit of plant-based whole fat, like I don't freak out about throwing a few, like, you know, just olive slices on a taco. If it's just like, Mm -hmm. you know, five olives something like that. I don't yeah. really worry about that. It's eat the olive, not the olive oil, <laughs> eat the yeah. flax meal, not the flax, oil. eat the avocado, not the avocado oil. My husband, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go back. My husband is 62 and he had really bad sunspots. He's a cowboy Marine police officer has lived his whole life in the sun. We own a roofing company. So when I say the sun, I mean like up on a roof sun and he had such bad sunspots that every year he would go and have them burned off. And he looked like a horror movie when he would do this. Y'all, he was supposed to have them done Christmas a year ago. They are gone. They are gone. So put him on a whole food plant diet. His dry skin is gone. I mean, it's amazing. My skin has improved a ton and I was really oily. So that's kind of something you would expect. Definitely But I mean, my skin is great. And I think when you're eating more plants, you're getting more antioxidants. I mean, you're Mm -hmm. getting more nutrients, nutrients. You just, it just kind of goes, I mean, it's kind of common sense that you're getting all these good things and we are literally what we eat. Yeah. Uh, Okay. I'll get off my tangent. (laughs) Well, and we're, we are sort of, we're, we're, we're bump up against everything that everybody else hears. And, and this may be helpful if Laura is still on here people don't want to hear that their bad habits aren't good for them. And I can't remember if that was chef AJ or Doug Lyle who said that, but they don't want to hear it. You know, they don't want to hear that what you're doing is a healthier way because then they, then it's like, they almost take it personally. Like you're somehow saying that they're doing something not healthy. That makes sense. And then on the protein thing too. I mean, I think the main reason that protein powders or whatever aren't, necessarily recommended what through the Esselstyn program or start solution or whatever is not necessarily about the protein, but it's more about it being so highly processed. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I do the same thing. I work out a lot. I've, I'm doing a lot of, um, like just trying to get lean and tone my muscles. So I find that if I have a half a serving of really clean protein powder, I just feel better. I feel like it works for me. And some of it is just taking, like taking all of this and figuring out what works for you. Just like Courtney said with yeah. with the flat feet or, or whatever. I think everybody's different. You know, like I lost 50 pounds eating 20 grams of fat a day. I, you know, which was probably, I mean, I know for a fact, substantially less than what I was eating. Um, you know, oh, I say 15 to 20. It just, it differed every, you know, every day. Um, but I, I had success with that. So I think everyone is just different. And yeah, you take the information you get, stick to whole plant foods as much as possible and, you know, do what you got to do. So 
you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. I, I, that's just, it's so good. And that's why I like doing this because sometimes it's nice to have more than just one person saying mm-hmm. things, right? Like once you start experiencing it in, in your body, um, you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to be nutrient deficient. People think that too, but I won't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, we had some <laughs> other questions we wanted to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, have you ever hit a plateau in your weight loss and what did, what worked or helped you? Yes, I had a plateau, um, gosh, up recently, um, probably for about five months and I was okay with it. I didn't really care, but I was stuck around, um, gosh, I don't really know the number, but it was a while. And, once I decided like, okay, I'm tired of this. Like, let's, let's get this weight loss train over uh, on again. Um, I just did more of the 50, 50 plate that, um, is talked about in the McDougal maximum weight loss book. Cause I had never really done that before. I never had to, I literally like just ate a lot of starchy veggies with mixed in with some non-starchy veggies. I never had to worry about, you know, I was blessed to not have to worry about the 50, 50 plate until probably, um, I'm about one, I'm fluctuating right now between like 136 and 140. So, um, I would say around like 150 something like 153, I was there for months. And so then when I finally was like, okay, I'm ready to, see if we can get a little lower. Um, I started doing the 50, 50 plate and that helped. Um, it was, it was helpful for me. Another thing I did, cause I kind of got tired of that for, you know, so many non-starchy veggies. I'm just going to be honest. I got tired of it. Um, I did a lot of potatoes. I did more potatoes. So I would, I would do, and I learned this from, I don't know, know how many people follow me. Um, or if y'all heard me talk about Ryan Adams, who is a weight loss, um, a plant-based weight loss coach. He, he kind of held my hand for the first part of my whole weight loss journey. Cause I had a lot of mental and emotional ties to food. And, um, he helped me figure out that, you know, I could just take a whole week. We called it potato intervention week and just take a whole week. And for breakfast, I would have, you know, my normal breakfast. And then um, I would just, the rest of the day would have potato meals. And that was really helpful. And I didn't want to do the 50, 50 plate. Cause I would just say, you know what, just this week, I'm going to do potato, a potato meal for lunch, a potato meal for dinner. And um, because potatoes are so satisfying, you really don't realize that you're, you know, taking in a lot less calories. And so um, that helped me get off the plateau too. So you know, that's what I, that's what I did. So, so also I, then I got down to around 140 and I had been at 140 for months. Um, I've been 140 for, I don't know, probably the last four months in this, uh, 2021, I decided I'm just gonna focus this year on doing 10,000 steps every day. You know, uh, activity just wasn't a big, um, I don't want to say concern. It just wasn't like on my list all of 2020. I did, I was active. Uh, it was just random. And so this year I want to make sure I'm doing it consistently every day. And so since I started that, um, you know, I'm seeing the scale say 136, you know, I never saw it say that. So it's exciting because I feel like just upping my activity a little bit, or I shouldn't say upping the activity, um, just being consistent with it, which is upping it, but just being consistent with it, um, that's helped me move the needle on the scale too, you know, and I'm not really doing crazy stuff, <laughs> just hiking or walking. I do love to run, so I'll run every now and then, but, um, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, 50, 50 plate eating, taking a week and doing potato meals twice a day and upping activity. I think those are the best ways to um, get off of a plateau and, and, and being patient, you know, and understanding that, you know, reaching a plateau to me means like, so I'm doing something right. Like I have, my body has adjusted, like it, it, 
you know, we're, we're doing something right. It's just kind of fighting back a little bit. So, um, I try to always look at things like a, positive. <laughs> it's like a new normal, right? Your body's yeah. like, oh, we're here now. Let us exhale and get to yeah. be here for a minute. And I feel like I'm, that's kind of where I am right now. And I think Courtney could probably say that's kind of where she is right now. And she has other factors sort of impacting her with her long COVID experience. Oh, but yeah, that's, that's so good. And so if people are interested in the potato thing, Mary McDougall has what's called a Mary's mini. There's a potato reset, then there's a Mary's mini. So you can, I'll drop the link in the chat um, for, for the information for that. And I think it's free on drmcdougall.com, the, the information about how to do that. And I haven't done it yet. I do love potatoes. I mean, again, my husband was like, what? We can have potatoes. And, but I get so full so fast on potatoes. I mean, literally I probably could, if I just did potatoes, I probably would be like um, just a couple of pounds from the range that I want to be in, you know? Um, but I just, I just get so full on them. I, I get right. it. And if for people who don't know, like the potatoes have pretty much every nutrient that you need. I mean, McDougal the other day, I heard him say, Dr. McDougal say that you could really could just live on potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's amazing. It's really just amazing. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Okay. Wanna, we love your, oh, go ahead, Courtney. I want to say, I, I was watching another, and we love Ron Adams, by the way. Um, he's I just awesome. love how he gets down to, he's so awesome. Um, he's I love how he gets down to the nitty gritty sometimes. Um, I heard another YouTuber today. Her name is Stasia. And this was, she was talking about hitting plateaus. And this was something I hadn't heard before. And I just thought, well, that's interesting. And I felt kind of stupid for not thinking of it, but she said that in her forums or something that people have said different starches keep you full longer. And it depends on the person. So for you, it might be rice. For me, it might be potatoes. And I thought, you know, I've been eating oatmeal literally five days a week for over like 14 months and I'm starving two hours later. Me Maybe too. I should be. Around. Me too. Like, I just, <laughs> Why, why did I not think of this? Like, it's so simple. So it just hadn't occurred to me that like, I need to pay attention. Like if I eat rice, am I hungry in two hours? Like maybe I need to eat beans or I don't know. I just, I just thought that was kind of something that of all the things I've heard, I just hadn't thought of that before. So I don't know. Do you have anything to add to that, Tia? You, you said oatmeal. No, I, I think that's interesting. Um, I also, my whole life, um, oatmeal is very satisfying to me, but yeah, about two hours after I'm starving. Um, and I don't know why, because it, it's, it's so crazy, but, um, yeah, same potatoes is very filling to me. I get full very quick with that, but I also find a couple hours after I'm a little hungry. Um, but rice, you said this made me think like rice is my jam. Like I, I can be full off of rice and beans for maybe all day. And it's now that you said this, it's so crazy because people have asked me, what is my favorite starch? Um, and if I had to pick, it would probably be rice. And when I started this whole way of life, I, I, everyone was like, Oh my God, you know, potatoes, potatoes are so great. And I was so thankful. I got to eat potatoes and I didn't really start to eat lots of potatoes or really any potatoes until like month four for me. Like I ate tons and tons of rice and beans and I was just in heaven. Um, and it kept me really full. So yeah, I think there might be something there, you know, now that I think about it, <laughs> rice, rice is always, always, you know, one that I have. Yeah. I, I love rice too. I mean, rice and potatoes. I feel like I, my body was literally starving for carbohydrates. Like, mm -hmm. and when I started when, cause I was doing a lot of cauliflower rice, which I still do sometimes depending on what else we're having. And I think that's important too. A moment ago, you mentioned how, if you're having this type of, uh, 
if you're having a certain fat or whatever, then you think about what you're having later. You don't do that at every meal. You don't have a fourth or half of not avocado at every meal that, that day. And I think that's important to note too, when you're doing, um, these, these other, these other things, but anyway, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? <laughs> Somebody ground me, hold my feet to the ground. <laughs> Courtney we were just talking about rice. rice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, and being food. yeah. I, and what? What'd you say, Courtney? And being full, like different different oh, starches okay. giving you satisfaction or satiety. Like some don't. Like I just figured out. Like maybe I don't need to be eating oatmeal every single day. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that happens to me too. And I think too, I get really rigid thinking like if I have potatoes in the morning, I need to have something green with it. And I don't do that at every meal. I think when I started this, I didn't, I didn't do 50, 50 plate at every meal, kind of like you were saying Tia. And now I'm just thinking, well, I'm going to have hash browns for breakfast then. That's yeah, I do that. I, I, I don't think about my grains really. I just eat them when I want them. And as the week goes on, if I haven't had many, I'll drink them or I'll eat more, or I just, um, I just don't think about it really. And that's one thing with me is I, I just don't really think about much. <laughs> I just, I just live this way and, you know, I, I go with every day. And so, um, you know, if I want to have potatoes all day, I do. If I want to have rice all day, I do. If I, I just, I just, the only thing I watch is just that I'm not going crazy on the fat. And a lot of that right now too is we never talked about this, but, um, I had a horrible gallbladder attack, um, right before I decided to do this and they wanted to take it out of me. And I said, no. Like, I, I don't want to have surgery. Um, I can fix this with food. I will. And I knew in the back of my head that all of this existed and I knew it would fix it. And so um, I have not had, knock on wood, um, any issue with gallbladder, anything eating this way. And so, you know, that's something I do have to keep in mind. Um, and that is why I'm so just a little bit like, you know, if I had fat from an avocado, I make sure I don't go a little crazier. I don't, I don't go too crazy the rest of the days because I don't want to flare up anything um, with my gallbladder. I'm super afraid of <laughs> having an attack like I did uh, ugh, like a year and a half ago. That was horrible. So, I mean, that's amazing that, I mean, there's so many, we're not getting in the weeds on this today, talking about heart disease and can't heart, heart, cancer and diabetes disease prevention and reversal, but we know, I mean, the research is there. I've been, you know, through a the AFPA certification reading how not to diet and how not to die. And there's so much information in there. I'm just like, how am I supposed to remember this? It's crazy. But it really is, but I'm just glad that, you know, I'll have that as a resource. I always tell myself that, but we're, you know, that's not what we're talking about today, all of these things, but I'm really glad you brought that up because I think there is a huge disconnect. People not understanding what whole food, whole food, plant-based eating, how it can support you, like how you can live longer, how you can not get breast cancer, how you can, you know, recover from your gallbladder, save your, you saved your gallbladder. Like wow. I saved it. I mean, that was just more proof to me that this is how we should be eating. Yeah. You know, our gallbladder was meant to um, produce bile to process all the fat, but not the crazy amounts that we eat with a whole foods plant based diet. And I mean, I, I can name on two hands people I know who are in their late 30s and early 40s like me who have had either the gallbladder removed or have gallstones or have gallbladder issues. Um, it, it's just, it's the way that society eats like it is too much fat it's just you know it's just more proof more proof it's just you know so it, it's amazing and I love that you said you're just living like you're not 
going, okay, you're, you're not strategizing around the food that you're eating. Like you have your, your pantry set with the things that, you know, serve you well. And one of the things that was so liberating, I think for Courtney and me in doing this was we had spent so much time doing and reading and researching all the things and figuring things out and trying this thing. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, we can eat this way for the rest of our lives. Like there was this big, like sort of exhale, you know, like we've got mm -hmm. time now we can refine this <laughs> yeah. our lives perfectly. But at the end of the day, if we eat the things that we know are nutrient rich and calorie dilute, that we're not going to be fat. We're not going to have a lot of fat on us. You know, and I think there's a fat is killing people like, people who have too much fat on their bodies. It's like literally causing disease and killing people, especially if it's coming from animal mm -hmm. sources. And I think we tiptoe around that so much, you know, because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. And I get that. But at the same time, like I, Courtney and I have very honest conversations. Like I don't, I don't want that there because I want to be as healthy as I can be. And, and this is how, this is how we're doing it. Yeah. And on that note, I brought up your, uh, since I brought up the pantry, we love your pantry chef videos. So can you tell us like your top tips? And I know you have videos on this and we'll link them, but top tips on organizing your pantry. Cause I also have pantry envy and I have two pantries, but yours is better. And like, what are your favorite like pantry chef meals? And you may have already answered that, but well, I get works. asked this a lot about the pantry chef meals. Like people want to know which meals are pantry chef meals. They all are. Everything I make. And it's because I only make stuff, you know, whatever I love, I make sure I have those ingredients all the time. So anything I make, anything on my YouTube channel, it's all me walking in my pantry, looking around saying, oh, you know what? Tacos sounds good. I'll look at some beans or, or red beans and rice, or I'll see lentils and I'll think, oh, I'll have lentil, red lentil, sloppy joe. Like everything is um, a pantry meal. Um, as far as organizing goes, I mean, I really think that's just up to you and how you want to organize it. I, it just kind of happened upon me. Um, I think, I think visually it makes things easier if you can take things out of boxes, you know, and put them in clear containers. I think that that helps, you know, when you walk in, you can actually see the stuff instead of, you know, having bags crinkled up um, of like a bag of lentils or a bag of beans, or I know um, my husband it drives me nuts, but <laughs> he gets like, all his nuts and seeds and he makes his own rips big bowl. So he gets it all in bulk from whole foods with these like green plastic bags and you can't see in them. And I'm, ugh. he has his own like um, container and it's just shoved in the corner, like his stuff. Cause it just messes up my whole pantry look. So um, I just think if you can see things clear and clear jars in clear glass containers, if you can get glass, if you got to get plastic, that's fine. But um, all of that helps when you're in a hurry and you need to walk in and make something really quick, um, you know, and then the only thing I really don't have in a clear container or jar, just like canned beans. I love canned beans. Um, so I just have those laying out, but yeah, you know, and if you don't, I think this is so important. I see this a lot. Sorry, my back's starting to hurt. Um, I see this a lot in one of the videos or maybe both of them. I think there's only two. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a giant pantry or not. What matters is that you're not running out. So if, if you just have, I know some people have just an apartment and they don't have a pantry, they use a, um, a cabinet, you know, for their pantry. That's fine. Like that's your pantry. So however much you can fit, fit that amount, but don't ever run out of it. So if that means having two cans of black beans in stock versus, you know, eight like me, then just have two, but just don't run out of it. Um, it doesn't matter how big the pantry is, or uh, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many comments I had gotten <laughs> the first video I did like, oh, well, well, you have a big pantry. Well, okay, but you can still do it. Like you can't let 
stuff like that defeat you and make you feel like, oh, you can't do it. Because yes, you can. Yes, you can. You just have to work with what you got, you know. Um, so I just think that's really important to mention is, you know, do what yeah, you got to do, but don't run out. Well, and I think that applies to all of this, right? Like if the place where you shop never has fresh produce, then get frozen or ah. get the cleanest canned stuff that you can get. It, it's going to be healthier for you than anything animal based that you could put in your body like ever. Um, mm -hmm. So I love that. Yeah. And you kind of shared with the main meals that you do out of your pantry. So I won't make you go through those again. I would like to know if you had any cravings throughout this journey and like kind of how you. Um, no, I, I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear, but um, no, <laughs> I feel like I was so satisfied and I still am. And I say was, cause I know in the beginning, that's the hardest part before your body kind of adjusts, but I really didn't have any cravings because I, I have always been someone who craved carbs. And so getting to eat the carbs, I was so satisfied all the time. I never craved anything. The things I craved were the food, the meals I was eating. Um, you know, now that's not to say there weren't times where I, you know, felt like I wanted chocolate or something. Um, and in that instance, I would go grab like, you know, a tiny little handful of vegan chocolate chips. Again, it's, it's not, you're not going to like ruin everything by doing that. It, you know, it was like 20 calories. It was nothing. So if that's what I had to do to um, appease that feeling, then I would do it, but it didn't happen a lot. Um, any sweet tooth I had, I was able to just eat fruit and be fine with it. Um, but on occasion, you know, I would have some dates, not a lot, or like a little bit of chocolate, like I said, vegan chocolate, or like one vegan marshmallow with like my kids, you know, Halloween. Halloween was the hardest because um, I'm such a candy person. But, um, you know, I just made sure I had dates. I was like, I'm going to have a couple dates. And I did. And they were so great. And I was so satisfied. So, um, you know, that's a really good reminder, too, because I need to get I need to get some dates. I think I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good dates. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Good ones. I don't know. I mean, I can get some organic ones around here. They're probably not the best. I've actually been to the date capital of the U.S. I guess it's somewhere in California. And I've been there and I, oh, we that's where I get mine. Is it? Well, I order them from two hot dates. Is that who the company? Um, I think that's I the name of the company. Oh, I don't like remember. Like soft and, 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 and like just yeah, they're like, like pure sugar. Oh my God. Just so good. Oh, you'll have to share the link to where you get your dates and we'll, I'll share it in the group. I, I got it and from my car, Hannah. She gets hers from there. And so, um, okay, oh my God. They're so good. Yeah, I need to do that. Um, let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Um, what about kitchen gadgets? Like, what are your favorite go-to things that make life easier in the kitchen? My favorite? Um, oh, well, the Instant Pot, like, for sure. That's, that's my favorite. Instant Pot and um, the Vitamix I use more than anything probably the only two things I really use. I have an air fryer, but I just don't use it a lot. Um, okay. that Is it getting too dark? I'm gonna put this light on really quick. Let me see. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's getting dark um, <laughs> here yeah, in Texas. Give us, a little, give us a little light. We won't keep Ooh, too much. I give you that light. orange light. <laughs> hey, Holly. I see Holly's at saying potatoes are liberating. She's been afraid of potatoes her whole adult life. Girl, eat all the potatoes. I potatoes. know. Oh my gosh. Anybody potatoes. To, like it's up and ask a question. Let us know. It's so great yeah. to get potatoes. I know I have friends who are close friends with me and they, um, they, they know how I eat, but they still like cannot get over that. I eat potatoes <laughs> and I lost 50 pounds. I'm like, I know. Well, you know, I know, you know, I'm pretty sure that that myth, I mean, as we've learned and being in this world and studying with all these doctors that, that people say, well, car you know, sugar causes diabetes, carbs turn to sugar, sugars make, make your blood sugar rise. And we know from all the study, all of the three of us have collectively done 
that that is not what causes diabetes. And right. so the fat, essentially the fat and it's animal the fat, fat cause fatty tissue to be in your liver and in your muscles. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't let the glycogen or it doesn't let the glucose get into the cells. It doesn't yeah. get in the blood. And this is what causes diabetes guys. So if people are on and thinking and wondering, just Google, uh, the Google insulin resistance. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see, you'll find, cause I don't want to get down that rabbit hole, but it's, it's just not true. You know, it's, it's not true. And really, where, where is like big potato industry, like <laughs> big potato industry needs to come forth and take a you know, big animal and big pharma and, and, you know, get us going. There you are. Sorry. Yeah, there you That's better. That's good. All right. So definitely instant pot. Totally agree with you there. I do use my air fryer a lot, but I use it for tofu and potatoes mainly. And, um, Oh, Let's get, unless anybody has a question about gadgets, let's talk about your ebook. Tell us about yeah. how your, your recent release. Um, I've already dropped all the links to your website and everything. Oh, you're so sweet. Bunch. I, um, right? yeah, I have the simple vegan mama, not to be confused with hungry vegan mama. Um, it is just all about, um, well, actually I have an E. Um, an ebook, and then I actually have a. Sorry, I just turned on this ring light. Oh, that's the lighting. Right, I actually have a real um, physical book you can get on Amazon. But oh. it's just um, it's a 28 day guide to help people stick to this way of living, and it's it's a different type of guide because it's not um, it's not an overload of recipes where you're eating different things every, every single day. So, um, but I talk a lot about, you know, um, why a whole foods plant-based diet is good. And, um, then I go into like how to become a simple vegan mama or dad, you know, whatever you could be a male too. And, um, and I just really talk about all of the things that worked for me and that I did to make this lifestyle stick. Um, and then I go into the 28 day meal plan and it's, it, it's so many people are loving it. And it's just really, it's really overwhelming just the amount of people that it's helping. Um, Cause you know, when you think about doing something like this, you just, you just don't know. Um, I just wanted to do it to help people, but to get feedback that like people are really sticking to it and enjoying it. It's just kind of awesome. It's, it's crazy. Awesome. So, um, you have, how else can we support you? What else can we do to help you? I've everything that you sent me, your bio and all of your links I have put here and I'll make sure they're front and center, but, um, obviously oh, go you. find you, YouTube, subscribe to your channel. You, you also have a website, anything else? Tell us. Tell yeah, us no, about. you guys are so sweet. Y'all have done so much. Um, you know, yeah, just YouTube and, and uh, my Instagram, my Instagram is really fun because I, this past week I haven't done this, but I usually um, post what I'm eating on a daily basis. Um, so I think that helps a lot of people too. And um, so, yeah, that's it. I, I appreciate, you know, this talk and just everything I'll have, have done and everything you're doing. I think it's great. Well, thank you for you and everything you're doing. <laughs> And Courtney, do you have some last things or anything you want to ask Tia? No, I'm definitely going to get the hard copy book. I Office Depot hates me because I make them copy so many ebooks because I don't have a printer that can keep up. So yeah, I am like tickled to be able to get a hard copy. So I like to have the book in my kitchen where I can just pull it out and open it up. You know, me too. Yeah. So, yeah. And I like simple, I, I just like simple meals, you know, I, I'm, I love to cook, but I don't have time to cook all, you know, all the time. So, yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Thank you.